I'm going to talk about um, time series data interpretation and specifically when we have these really um, dense data sets where we have water quality at a high frequency with discharge either from uh, meters or from really high frequency sampling. When we have these data sets there's a lot of nuance in the relationship between water quality and discharge that we can interpret that can tell us things about the system. And so specifically, if we think about uh, sediment concentration and discharge, let's start out by looking at a typical spring snowmelt hydrograph. And then over here, we've got a, so on the primary y-axis, we've got discharge. On the secondary y-axis over here, we've got sediment concentration. And then coupled with that, we've got a regression between sediment and discharge. And so we know that at low discharges, sediment concentration starts out low. So on the regression, low sediment, low discharge. <coughs> low discharge. As we move up, in a situation with no hysteresis, the concentration of uh, suspended sediment moves up with discharge, as we know. And so we move up this line with both increasing. And then perhaps they peak at the same time. and the sediment concentration then drops back off with the falling or receding limb of the hydrograph and uh, then we end up with at base flow very low sediment concentrations. And so what we end up with then is this regression with a positive correlation between sediment concentration and discharge just like we've talked about throughout class. Um, so if we take a closer look at what this means, at the same sediment, at the same discharge here, with this dotted blue line, if we look at what the sediment concentration is, um, we've got on the ri rising limb of the hydrograph, we've got this sediment concentration, and on the falling limb of the hydrograph, at the same discharge, we have this concentration. And those are essentially equal, which means that they plot right next to each other on the regression. So in this case, with no hysteresis, we go from low concentrations and low discharge to high concentrations and high discharge in a relatively straight line. And then we turn right back around and come back down the same line. And we get this tight regression between sediment concentration and discharge. Now let's think about a similar situation where hysteresis is or a lagged effect is occurring. And so if we start out again at low discharge and low sediment concentration, and then our sediment concentration starts to climb on the rising limb of the hydrograph faster than the discharge climbs, and then peaks before discharge peaks, and starts to drop back off, we see that we get this pattern that is a little bit different, where on the rising limb of the hydrograph, the concentration increases of sediment increases faster than discharge on, on that rising limb. So if we compare the same discharge again as we did above, the sediment concentration at that discharge at this, on this rising limb of the hydrograph is up here, and the sediment concentration at that same discharge on the falling limb of the hydrograph is down here. And so if we draw the line across, we have a much higher sediment concentration relative to discharge on the rising limb than we do on the falling limb of the hydrograph. And so if we think about the time series again, in the regression, we move up with sediment concentration faster than we move up with discharge. And then we, we have our peak sediment concentrations here, so at the top of our y-axis for sediment, before we have the peak discharge, which is uh, our x-axis. So here's our peak discharge over here. And now we've dropped back down in sediment concentration already. And so we get this shape, which is characteristic of hysteresis, or a lag, in concentration behind discharge, or concentration in front, in peaking in front of discharge, rather, in this case. So if we fit a regression line through this data, we still get a positive correlation, but there's a nuance here where we see on the rising limb higher sediment concentrations than on the falling limb. 
And this could co commonly happen if we think about a flushing effect. If you think about discharge rising in the spring, you've got all of this road sand, perhaps, or um, loosened particles from overwinter under the snowpack, and that washes off as the discharge starts to come up and overland flow occurs. But then you've washed the landscape, and as you're receding on the hydrograph, there's not sediment to move anymore, and so you have lower concentrations. So that's one explanation. This is a typical type of pattern you would expect to see between sediment concentration and discharge, this hysteretic pattern. Let's think briefly about the same thing and what we might see with total dissolved solids. So instead of um, suspended sediment, if something is dissolved in the water. So again, where do we expect total dissolved solids to be at low discharge? We expect it to start high, right, because we're receiving more of our water from base flow, from groundwater, where it's had an opportunity to interact with the minerals and dissolve um, salts. And then as the discharge rises, our concentration of total dissolved solids over here on our secondary axis drops. And in a case here with no hysteresis, perhaps the trough and the peak are at the same time. And then our as our discharge drops back off on the falling limb of the hydrograph, our total dissolved solids climbs again, and we get this uh, straight regression that we've seen in our homework and in some of our data. And so again, you, got, you start high, you decrease in total dissolved solids as discharge comes up, and then you turn around and you go right back up that uh, regression line in a case with no hysteresis. If you have hysteresis, with total dissolved solids, things could be a little bit more complex with sediment. Um, but similarly, we start off with high total dissolved solids on our secondary y-axis here when we have low discharge. And then perhaps we stay high in total dissolved solids at the beginning of the rising limb of the hydrograph. And one reason that we could conceptualize this is if there is uh, salt that has been accumulating on the surface um, in an arid environment is where you might expect to see this. And then it starts to drop off later, and we see the lowest point, the trough, in the total dissolved solids um, after that for discharge. And so then as we get to the... Um, so as we get to the rising or the falling limb of the hydrograph um, and back down to base flows, TDS goes back up. But we've got this nuance here where the peak in the discharge occurs before the trough in the total dissolved solids. Or again, a hysteretic lag. And so that might look like this um, with total dissolved solids where in this case, TDS is not dropping off as fast as discharge, or discharge is coming up faster than total dissolved solids is dropping. And then on the rising, or the falling limb of the hydrograph, TDS is coming back up after discharge. So again, if we look here up, up here at the non-hysteretic or no hysteresis example for total dissolved solids. At the same discharge, we've got um, similar total dissolved solids values, whereas down here with hysteresis, we have at the same discharges, um, at this discharge on the rising limb, the concentration of total dissolved solids is much higher than it is at that same discharge on the falling limb of the hydrograph. Um, the TDS is, is much lower down here. So both of, both of these hysteresis plots, which produce regressions that um, conceptually look something like this, are indicative of flushing of contaminants off of the surface with the rising limb of the hydrograph. So here for sediment, for the solid um, example, solids examples, we have the concentration of sediment on the rising limb higher than it is on the low, low, uh, falling limb, so a flushing on that rising limb. Similarly, with total dissolved solids, if there was that accumulation of salts on the surface in an arid landscape, the TDS might drop off more slowly 
um, at the beginning of the rising limb of the hydrograph. Rising limb of the hydrograph means from moving, moving from left to right here, right? Increasing discharge. Rising limb of the hydrograph, um, higher concentrations of TDS than on the falling limb. So for those of you who have um, robust data sets, this is something to look for and you could zoom in on one specific storm event and uh, look for hysteresis and interpret that and think about what it might be telling you about the pathways that pollutants and the timing that pollutants are taking to your waterway. And even if you don't have a robust data set, you could think about the implications of what you're missing in your data um, if you don't have high frequency data around the rising and falling limbs of storm events and think about that for talking about interpretation of your data and potential limitations or other data that you might like to collect moving forward.